Hi guys, and welcome to this video on the properties of kites. So we're going to learn about how to find missing information uh, from a quadrilateral using the properties of, of a kite. Kites are useful measurement tools in construction, and you can fill in missing sides or angles of a kite give, using given information if you're doing everything successfully. So. The flow chart you guys have from class should only have the summed up version of the properties that are presented to you. Um, you still should be taking notes as per usual. So let's start off with the first property of kites. The two non-vertex angles, the ones that are across from each other here labeled B and D, are congruent. That is the first property of kites. So the non-vertex angles in a kite are congruent. So you can say that angle B and angle D are congruent. Angle A and angle C, the ones that contain the double pairs of congruent sides, are not congruent. The second property of kites. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. And in case you forgot, diagonals are the imaginary lines drawn between any two non-consecutive vertices. So, in a kite, these imaginary lines are always perpendicular. As you can see, they form two sets of congruent right triangles, which you can use the Pythagorean theorem with in order to calculate missing measurements of the diagonals or sides that you do not know. The third property of kites says that the diagonal that is between the non-vertex angles, so the diagonal that uh, separates angle B from angle D, is bisected, cut in half, by the other longer diagonal. And this means that segment BM is congruent to segment MD, but it does not mean that AM is congruent to MC. Those segments are clearly, as shown in the diagram, not congruent. Fourth property of kites. The vertex angles of a kite are bisected by a diagonal. So you can see that the long diagonal creates two separate and congruent angles within the kite. So in this diagram, angle DAC is congruent to angle BAC, and angle DCA is congruent to angle BCA. So let's practice. Find the measure of x and y. So, y is a given side length, or an uh, unknown side length here. x is the distance from the center point to this vertex over here. So if I just drop some like a, b, c, and d, just to label some of the endpoints of the kite. So from a, x represents the distance from the center point to b. We have a property, property one, that states that x must be equal to the other half of the uh, diagonal below. And to calculate the measure of y, I could do the Pythagorean theorem, since this, one of my properties says that all of these angles in here, including the one up here, are right angles. So I can go ahead and use uh, the Pythagorean theorem to calculate that 8 squared plus 15 squared must be equal to y squared. So that's just an application of Pythagorean theorem. Um, 8 squared is 64 plus 15 squared is 225 is equal to y squared. Uh, I can then add those two amounts together to get 289 is equal to y squared. So if I was going to take the square root of both sides, the square root of 289 is 17, and the square root of y squared is just normal y. So taking the square root of, and that gives me my final answer. So y would have a length of 17. Find the value of y in the kite 
below. So if we're given a problem like this, it is important for us to use the properties of kites combined with our general knowledge of quadrilaterals. So one of the things that I know about all quadrilaterals, so all quadrilaterals, all four-sided shapes, is that the four angles sum to 180 degrees. 180, excuse me, 360 degrees. Oh boy, I was thinking of a different property. 360 degrees. So with that in mind, I can write an equation. All of these angles together, plus a missing one down here, have to sum to 360. I don't have to guess or fill in a variable for this blank angle down here. I know through the properties of kites that the non-vertex angle, this one would be like if I did A and B and C and D. My C's always look weird. C and D. I know that angle D and B must be congruent. I don't know what I was drawing there. Oop, I'm really struggling. There we go. Okay, so I can write, I know that angle B has to be congruent to angle D, so I can write a corresponding equation to do so. I can say that 112 plus 112, the two known angle quantities, plus the angle marked with a Y, plus the angle a marked with the quantity 2y plus 1 has to equal 360 degrees. And this is a direct result of the all quadrilaterals four angles summed to 360. So I have angle A, or this would be angle B, this would be angle D, angle C, and angle A. So I have all four angles included. So I can just do some simple equation solving. 112 plus 112 would be 224. And then y and 2y is 3y. And the 224, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add in this additional 1 over here to make it 225 plus 3y equals 360. If I subtract 225 from both sides, I get 3y is equal to 135. So then uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I get y is equal to 45, which means angle C up here, this angle here, would be 45 degrees, whereas this angle over here would be 91 degrees. So I substitute 45, 2 times 45 is 90, plus 1 is 91. And if you add all of these measures together, 91, 112, 112, and 45, you will get 360. So here's one where I have to find the measure of x and of y. So the first thing that I need to do is actually use, find the measure of x, and then go back and use that angle measure here in order to calculate all of these three angles. Uh, all of the two missing variables, excuse me. Um, I know, so if I start dropping some labels on here, A, B, C, and D. I know that B and D are congruent, so B has to be equal to D. So I can then say that the expression for B, 11x plus 2, has to equal the measure of angle D. So if I solve, I get 11x equals 132. And divide by 11 on both sides, x has to equal um, 12. So x equals 12. You would substitute that in there. And you're going to get 134 degrees. So that allows me to find the measure of x. And this statement, angle B is congruent to angle D, 
is based off of the property that the two non-vertex angles are congruent, that would be property two. So now um, I can use the property that all of the angles in this triangle, or in this quad kite, excuse me, this quadrilateral, must equal 360. So I'm going to write an equation. Uh, angle A for Y plus angle B, which I now know to measure 134 degrees, plus angle C, so that's A, that's B. Angle C is 8Y minus 4 plus 134 has to sum to 360 degrees. So if you add it all up, 4y and 8y is 12y. 134, 134 is 268. And then 268 minus 4 is 200, positive 264 equals 360. So then we're going to subtract 264 from both sides to get 12y equals 96. Dividing by 12, y equals 8. So then we have y equals 8 to go with x of 12. Uh, when we substitute those values in, we get 32 degrees over here for angle A. And over here, we're going to get 8 times 8 is 64, minus 4 is 60 degrees. So if we go ahead and insert all of those four measurements, they should sum up to 360 degrees. And then finally, I have a kite that has a ton of different measurements in it. It's got a diagonal. We'll go A, B, C. And D. It's got a diagonal with a half of or a mini length of three and a long length of X. It has a diagonal from B to D that has a half length of five and an unknown other half length. And then I'm looking for X, the unknown long length here. So in this kite, Y represents one of the short diagonals, short diagonal halves. So since this is a short diagonal half, that means that y must be congruent to 5. Since in the short, the short diagonals, two halves are congruent automatically. So I, if y is congruent to 5, it means that y equals 5. Knowing that, or using uh, this right here, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the measure of x. 5 squared, the short leg, plus the longer leg, x squared, equals 13 squared, the diagonal hypotenuse. So 25 plus x squared equals 169. Take 25 from both sides, I get x squared equals 144. Take the square root of both sides, and you get x equals 12. So I've got my x, I found the y, and answered everything that goes in. So in summary guys, kites are quadrilaterals that have two pairs of congruent but non-parallel sides. Um, all of the angles inside of this quadrilateral and all quadrilaterals sum up to 360 degrees. The diagonals and sides have unique properties that allow us to find, to algebraically find missing values if needed. Um, please put those four properties on your flowchart. And that's it, guys. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.